Today on The Joy of Editing, in this episode, we'll be exploring a full edit process. We'll start in Lightroom and later transition to Photoshop utilizing the TK8 plugin. Join me for a relaxed and informative editing session. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing. I'm your host, Dave Kelly, and it is TK Friday my favorite day of the week. Thank you for joining me. I really appreciate each and every one of you out there at Tune in every TK Friday and watch my videos. And also through the week, I post videos generally on Sundays and Wednesdays and of course, TK Fridays. If you enjoy my tutorials, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. This really helps me to grow this channel. And when you do that, I really appreciate it. Today, it's going to be something a little different. I don't usually show you the opening Lightroom adjustments. I thought on this image today, I would start out in Lightroom, do the full edit here in Lightroom. I mean, not the full edit, but the part that I do in Lightroom. And then we'll send it into Photoshop and we'll go from there. Now, you can download this raw file along with the linear profile that I'll be using and the PDF notes that go along with this tutorial. The first thing I do want to do, though, is show you how to install the linear profile. We'll be using Photoshop to do that, and I recommend that you have Lightroom shut down when you do this. And then when you open Lightroom back up, that linear profile should be there for you. By the way, if you don't yet own the TK8 plugin for Photoshop, you can click on my affiliate link found in the description below this video. Just click on that link. It'll take you to the TK web store where you can purchase the TK8 plugin for Photoshop along with training videos. And if you use my promo code DK15, you'll save 15% off your entire purchase. And when you do that, you're supporting the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And for that, I truly thank you. We need to install the linear profile from within Photoshop. Now make sure you have an image open. It could be any image. We're not going to be processing it, but we need an image open. That's important. You're in Photoshop now. You have an image opened. It can be any image, as I said. And what we want to do is open up Adobe Camera Raw. Now it's easy to get to with the TKA plugin for Photoshop. Just click on ACR on the combo panel or ACR on the CX panel. Or you could come up here to filter and access Adobe Camera Raw filter here as well. So just click on ACR and that'll open up the Camera Raw filter. Then what you need to do, and this is so simple, just come up here. You see these two circles that are overlapping each other? This is the preset icon. Click on that and then click on these three dots right here, okay? More preset options, so click on that. And then you're going to find Import Profiles and Presets. So click on that. And once you do that, your file browser will open up. And now I downloaded the Linear Profile to my Downloads folder. And you can see there it is right there. It's a Sony Linear Profile 7RM3.zip. It's a zip file. All you need to do is click on this and click Import. Now you'll notice I have a message here. Mine says, unable to import any profiles or presets. All items were already imported. That's because I already put mine in. You won't get that message. And I'll just click OK here. And that's it. Your profile is in. And then we can just click on Cancel here. And we could close this image out. I don't really need this anymore. OK. And now go ahead and open up Lightroom. And I'll meet you in Lightroom. And now here I am in Lightroom. Now this image is called Poppies and Thunderstorm. It was titled by the creator, which is Jose Gonzalez. And I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, Jose. It's a peaceful and calm image, and I really like it, of a poppy field with a thunderstorm brewing in the background. Now it's hard to tell right now it's a thunderstorm, but we're going to bring that out when we use the TK plugin for Photoshop. Now, right now we're seeing the Adobe Color Profile, and the, the thunderstorm doesn't show up really well right here. I always like to start with a linear profile, but that's my thing. Um, if you click right here on these, looks like a window pane, I guess, the four rectangles, click on here. You'll find your profiles in here. Here's your Adobe profiles. And as you hover over these profiles, you can see how they change. The closest thing you're going to get to a linear profile would be an Adobe neutral profile. So if you didn't want to install the linear profile, you could get a, a, a close result with a Adobe neutral. But then you're going to find your matching camera profiles. And then underneath there, you should find the linear profile. Linear Sony 
what's that, ILCE7RM3. And that's what it looks like, really dull, right? So we'll click on this. And now you'll notice, well, I'll close this first. And now you'll notice we have the profile is the linear Sony profile. Okay, and then the next step for me is to click on auto. And now it looks a lot better, but we can start to really see that thunderstorm coming out back here. And the next thing I'll usually do is look at my histogram. And you can see I am clipping up here in the highlights and the shadows a little bit. So what I do is take this white and I'll just pull it back. And I pulled mine back to a plus 38 to give myself a little room for clipping. I don't want to clip anything. And you'll notice my shadows are no longer clipped when I move this back. I don't know why, but so I'm gonna leave this at minus 27, I think that's okay. I would rather not ever clip highlights because if you ever make a print and you have clipped highlights, no ink goes down for most printers where that has clipped. And it looks kind of odd if you look to it in the light in a certain direction, it'll look like there's no ink there and that doesn't look good. Plus there's no detail in any of those white areas doesn't matter so much if you clip the shadows it'll it because ink will go down and sometimes a little clip shadow can look nice and the other thing i did was i just double clicked on vibrance to reset it to zero and double clicked on saturation to reset that to zero because i'll be doing some saturation painting inside of photoshop so i didn't want to go too crazy with my colors right here in lightroom and then under lens corrections, I always uh, have remove chromatic aberrations checked on and enable profile corrections checked on. So that's important. As far as detail is concerned, I just use the default sharpening of 40. No noise reduction, but color noise reduction. This was a very low ISO of 640. So I don't think noise is an issue. You can always denoise it later if you need to. And then the last thing I did was I did a bit of a crop here. And my crop was something like, and here's a little tip for crop. In Lightroom, you can shut your lights out. I always like to type my L key twice to shut the lights out. So you could kind of see what the crop's going to look like. So I just kind of pulled down a little bit. And I believe I pulled this side in to somewhere right around here. And I think I may have pulled this side in a little bit to something like that. And I pulled up from the bottom just a little bit. I think I, my crop was something like that. But it's up to you whether you want to crop it or not. And now if I type my L key again, my lights will come back on. And I'll just type my return key to accept that crop. And so there you go. And then at this point, all I do is right click, click on edit in and click on edit in Photoshop 2023. My image is already there and I will meet you in Photoshop next. And now here we are in Photoshop and let's get started. I always like to start out with my balance and contrast adjustments and I want to adjust the sky separately from the foreground. So what I'd like to do is save out a sky and a foreground channel to help me out. So to do that, I'm going to click on this button on the combo panel to select the sky. And then we can click this button and save that out in channels. So I'll just call this sky and click OK. And when I do, you can see it's saved out there in channels. And now we can invert it by clicking this invert button right underneath the save to channels button. Now don't confuse it with this invert button right here. This inverts like a pixel layer. You don't want to do that or it'll invert a mask or whatever. But this will invert a selection. So click on this. And now we're going to click this button right above it again to save it as a channel. And I'm going to call this foreground. And then I'll simply click on OK. And now I have a sky and a foreground saved. Now I want to start with adjusting the foreground first. So I'm going to come up here to my channels. And as you'll notice, I still have a selection. You can see the marching ants. So I can either click on active selection or foreground. Either one will do the same thing. Let's click on foreground. And now I will use a mask calculator, one of my favorite things in the TK plugin for Photoshop. So let's click on the mask calculator button. Now I want to do an intersection. I do this all the time. And you'll notice that when you watch my TK Friday videos, I'll click X to intersect. Now we're going to X out of here by clicking this X up here for the foreground. And then I want to click on the luminosity mask button. And I want to use a Midtones 3. Now, I only use this to save me from clipping shadows and highlights. It just protects me from that, which is really cool. And then we're going to click on Equal to make the calculation. And now you notice I have the foreground, but my highlights and shadows will be protected from clipping. 
I want to output this to a color grading tool and then we will do some adjustments. Now you'll notice with the color grading tool, we have three blocks up here. We have black, gray, and white. Black representing shadows, gray representing midtones, and white representing highlights. And then you have three blocks here. If you click here, you can see if you have any color grading on any of the different colors. And this color wheel here is for color grading, which is really awesome. And we will do a little color grading here. Not much, but a little. But first off, let's work with shadows. So let me click on the black block for shadows. And it's totally up to you whether you start with shadows, midtones, or highlights. But I'll start with shadows. And all I want to do is drag this slider a little bit to the left to maybe right about here just to deepen up the shadows a little bit. And next I'll work with midtones. So I'll click on the gray block. And I just want to open up the midtones a little bit. So I'll drag this slider a little bit to the right. Maybe somewhere right around there. And I just want to favor green a little bit. So I'm going to take this gray block in the color grading section where the color wheel is here and just drag it up just a little bit. See how it makes the greens a little bit greener, which is nice. And now let's go to highlights. So I'll click on the white block and I'm just going to drag this over to somewhere right about here. Now let's check it out. Here's the before and here's the after, but already a really nice change here. Well, so far so good. Now let's turn our attention to the sky and see if we can bring that rain cloud stormy thunderstorm filling out so let's go ahead and click on my channels but we don't see it because we have this color grading tool in the way just click the x nothing changes here and now we can click on the my channels button this time we want the sky and we want the mass calculator so click on the mass calculator click x to intersect now click this x to get out of here and now we'll click on the luminosity mask button. And just like on the foreground, we're going to click midtones three to protect highlights and shadows from clipping. We'll click equal to make the calculation. And now we'll output that to a color grading tool. Now here's that color grading layer. And you'll notice there's the mask I just created on it. And here's my color grading tool. Now I'm not going to use the shadow block because I don't have any real dark clouds here. So I will work with midtones and highlights, however. So let me click on midtones first, and I want to drag this slider to the left to darken up those midtones a good bit to maybe over to right about here to really get those midtones darkened up. And now let's click on highlights. And now let's go ahead and open up those highlights to somewhere right about here, I think looks pretty good. Now I have a lot of yellow over here, and it doesn't look bad. And if you like it, you could leave it this way. But what I did was I took this highlight block and kind of drug it into the blues a little bit just to offset the yellow, just to tame that yellow down a little bit. And I think right here looks pretty good. Now here is the before, and here's my after. But now you can see I'm really starting to bring out those stormy clouds back here. They're really starting to show up. Oh, look, I see a dust spot that just showed up right here. I didn't see that before, but we'll take care of that later. And there's a really cool action in the TK8 plugin for Photoshop for that. So far, so good. Let's click my before after action. Here's before and here's after. I will leave a link in the description below if you want to download this before after action. Okay, so let me click on the top layer here. And what is next? I just want to lighten up the midtones. Now to do that, very simple. Let's X out of the color grading tool. And remember, nothing changes here. All I'm going to do is click on the luminosity mask button. And I love to do this. If you ever need to lighten midtones up, this is a surefire way of doing that. So luminosity and click on midtones one. Now you have three midtones, midtones one, two, and three, and they all get lighter as they go. But I just want the number one, the one it's the most subtle setting. Okay. Number one, and I'm going to output this to, it could be curves. It could be levels. It could be brightness, contrast, hue saturation. It doesn't matter because I'm not going to use the adjustment. I'm just going to use a blend mode. So let me click on the levels, or I should say the curves adjustment. And all I want to do is change this to a screen blend mode. Now, nothing has changed, right? So if, you, if I click this eye before, after, nothing has changed. But check this out when I click on screen. I've just lightened up my midtones. <laughs> Isn't that nice? But I think it's too bright. And usually what I like to do is take it the whole way off and then just start to build the opacity up slowly. And whenever it gets to the point that you like, just stop. And I like mine right about 60. Now, you may like yours lighter or darker. It's totally up to you. 
Because when you're editing, remember, you're in charge, not me. Here's the before and here's the after. But see how that just lightens up the midtones a little bit. Coming up next is some saturation painting. Now, I could have subtitled this the saturation painting tutorial. But I came up with a way of using color masks along with saturation painting. And it looks to be a very promising way of editing color in your images. And you'll find out shortly how it works. Now, the first thing I want to use saturation painting on is the sky. I feel the sky is a little bit too blue for me. Now, for you, it may not be. And if it's not, don't touch it. It's totally up to you. But I just want to ease off on the blue a little bit. Now, I don't have to use a color mask here. I can just use a sky channel to help me out. So I'm going to click on my channels and click on sky. And that gives me the sky channel because that's going to isolate the sky for me. And now all I'm going to do is call, I like to call this a hamburger menu right here. So click on this and click on this button right here, which is for saturation painting. And I want you to notice something here. You have a gray swatch and a red swatch. Now the gray swatch is for removing saturation. The Red swatches for adding saturation. And Tony told me it doesn't really matter if it's red or any color. It, it really doesn't matter. It, it'll do the same effect. But gray will remove saturation and red will add saturation. Now, the cool thing about this is you'll notice this is a blank pixel layer. And it's in the saturation blend mode. And that's a unique blend mode because what it does, it will only affect saturation it will not affect brightness or hue. So it'll leave hue and brightness alone. It'll only alter saturation. And whenever you paint with gray, 50% gray, you'll reduce. Now we can use lower levels of gray. And what I'm using here is 30%. Right now I'm on 10% opacity. I'm going to type my three key. That gives me 30%. And check this out. I'll just have a big brush here and I'll just simply paint across here and I'm reducing that saturation of that blue up there. You see that? I'm not lifting my brush, but I'm just painting right along here. And it's only allowing me to stay in the sky area. So just like that. That's all I want to do is reduce some of that blue. I have not lifted my brush yet. Now I have. Now check it out. Here is the before. And here is the after, but isn't that a nice way of reducing saturation? And now you always have your opacity, and I always recommend to go a little overboard on your adjustments because you can always pull them back with this opacity. In other words, let's take this opacity. Right now it's at 100%. Let's take it the whole way off, and now we got that blue back. And now let's slowly start to adjust this to the right. And I found out when I got this to like 85%, I thought... That looked good. So here's the before and here's the after. See, it just tones it down a bit. And if you want more, just uh, drag the opacity to the left. You can add more. But you can go back and alter these adjustments at any time you want. This is a non-destructive workflow for the most part. Sometimes we do destructive things in it. But right now, it's totally non-destructive. Before I move to the next step, let me say this about saturation painting. If you're painting with 50% gray and 100%, you will totally remove all the color. Okay, it'll go black and white. If you're painting with red or any other color at 100%, you will totally add as much saturation as you can possibly add to the image at 100%. This is where reduced brush opacities come in handy. And let me show you what I mean. Right now I have a selection. So I'm just going to click this button right here in the combo panel deselect my selection. So let me teach you something right here and this will really benefit you. Okay, let me put a blank pixel layer above here so we can click this button right here and we'll add a blank pixel layer above here. Now I still have my gray brush up here, okay? So I'm gonna change my opacity to 100%. And now let me change this blend mode to saturation. And if I paint over here at 100%, you notice I just make the image black and white. Well, typically you wouldn't want that, right? Let me just command or control Z to get rid of that. But if I went to say like 20% and I would just take 20% of the saturation off, you see that? So that would be more helpful. Let me do a command or control Z again. And now if I flip this swatch to red and go to 100%, so I'll take my zero key to get 100%. So now I'm putting maximum saturation down, which is not very helpful, right? So let me do a command or control Z. And now if I go to say like 10% and paint over here, 
You can see I've added a little bit more saturation. Now when I lift my brush and paint again, I add a little bit more. It's not 10% more, but it's incrementally going up each time I lift the brush. As you can see as I paint over here, you see that's very helpful. This is where saturation painting could come in, but it works best when you use lower brush opacities. And that's all I wanted to explain because we're going to be doing some more saturation painting right now. But let me go ahead and get rid of this layer by clicking on this trash can. And now we'll move on to our next step with saturation painting and a color mask. All right, so next what I wanna do is bring up the green saturation, mainly in the middle area here, and I'll use saturation painting for that. But here's my new technique. Click on the color mask icon right here to get a color mask and we're gonna select some green in here or it's really yellow, it's more yellow, but right here and click OK. And you can see we've selected those green colors. And now what I wanna do is lighten that up by taking this brightness slider and dragging it to the right to really lighten up the greens like that. Now we'll, I'll put the saturation painting, so we'll click this hamburger icon again and click on the saturation painting icon here and we will get gray. Now we need to flip this. Now you could click right here to flip this or type your X key, that's the shortcut. Now I wanna be at 10% opacity and I am. The shortcut for 10% opacity, just type your one key. And now what I wanna do is just increase this green saturation. It will only affect green because the color mask is really helping me. So I'm just gonna paint all the green as I come down through here the whole way down to the bottom without lifting the brush. Now I've lifted the brush and I wanna add some more green right in this area, right in the center here, because this is the focal point right in here in the center area. And maybe I'll hit it one more time. I lifted the brush and I'll paint one more time down into here, just like that. Now check it out, here is the before and here is the after. Now, if it's too strong, again, we can pull this opacity back. And again, I'd rather overdo, so let's take it the whole way off. And now let's build it up slowly. And when we get to a spot that we like, we will stop. And I'm gonna stop right here, right around 82%, 81%, let's say that. Now let's see, here is the before and here's the after, but see how we can increase that green a little bit? But that is saturation painting using a color mask just to target the color you want. And remember that saturation blend mode only affects saturation. It does not affect brightness or hue. Now, if I would have used the hue saturation layer and pulled up the saturation, it would have affected the brightness as well, which I did not want. That's why I chose to do saturation painting. We'll be doing some saturation painting on the red poppies, but first I wanna darken up the sky a little bit to bring out some more of that thunderstorm rain filled to the clouds back there. So I'll click on the My Channels button because I wanna work on the sky, so let's click on Sky. Now let's use the Mask Calculator, so click on the Mask Calculator. We're gonna do another intersection, so click on the X. We're gonna X out of here. And now we're gonna try a Zone Mask, so click on the Zone Mask button right here. And I wanna click on some of the dark cloud right here, I think should represent most of the dark in the clouds, and we'll click OK. And now I'm gonna do my tighten and lighten. I'll tighten first. So I'm gonna drag this slider and drag it over to right about here. See how it really tightens that up? And now let's lighten this up a little bit. So let's move this brightness slider over to right about here. And I think that's good. Now we can click equal to make the calculation. And now we have that sky. And now I just wanna output it to a burn tool. So I'm gonna click on the left side of this burn tool. The right side gives you a blank pixel layer. The left side gives you a 50% gray. I always like to use the 50% gray layer most of the time. Sometimes I'll use transparent, but let me click on the left side. And now I'm painting through a selection. You can see by the selection indicator here. And now with about 10% opacity, and I'm already at 10%, so I don't have to change anything here. And now with a nice big brush, I can just start painting some darkness. And I'm not lifting the brush and I'm just painting over this entire sky like right in here. I'm gonna stay away from that hill back there. Okay, so there's one pass. And then I'll darken this cloud a little bit more over in here, maybe up into here, maybe out in here a little bit more over in here. But see how that thunderstorm feel is really starting to come out. And maybe up here one more time. And I think that's pretty good. So let's take a look. Here is the before. 
And here is the after. So that really helps. And remember, if you want too much, you can always pull back on this opacity here if you think you need it. But I'm going to leave mine just the way it is. And I feel I'm a little strong right around in here. So this is the nice thing about the 50% gray layer. By the way, we are using a soft light blend mode. If I click on this gray brush here, and I'm still at 10%, I can just paint over here once, maybe twice, and just back that off a little bit so you can blend and reduce the amount of the burning with the gray brush. That's a cool little tip. And now, how about some more saturation painting? I want to bring up the reds and the poppies, mainly in the middle of the field here, the focal point. So let's click on the color mask icon right here and we can make a color mask so i'll click that and i'll click some of the red in here like right here click ok and see how it targets that and now let me just lighten this up to somewhere right about here to really lighten up those reds i think that's good and again i'm going to output it i'm going to click on this hamburger menu and use saturation painting click on that button right there and now again at 10 percent. and remember the secret here is to use a low opacity and now it's only targeting red. So right now we're using gray, so I'd be removing saturation. So I want to flip this. So I'm going to type my X key, or you could click this right here. And now let's just give us some red. I'm not going to lift the brush. I'm going to paint over all these poppies with that 10%, even the whole way down into here. But now I've lifted my brush, and I'm going to paint in the center area right in here. That's one pass. And maybe I'm going to hit right in here one more time just to make my viewer really look at those poppies, okay? So check it out. Here is the before and here is the after. And maybe, you know what, one more pass right through here. Again, let's check it out. Here is the before and here's the after and I like it. And if you're too strong, remember, you got the opacity, you can just take it back. And I'll take it the whole way off and we'll build it up slow. This is the way I like to do it. And when I'll, I'll stop at a point where I think it looks good. And I'm thinking right around here, around 72%. Here's the before and here's the after because I don't want to overdo it. Now, let's address this dust spot right here. Now, there may be other dust spots, but we can use an action See this clean dust action? Click on that, and it zooms the image in for you. And then, you know, you can move around the image and look for dust spots. You can clearly see that dust spot. Now, you got some help here. See where it says amplified dust? This is a levels adjustment. This uh, is a hue saturation layer that desaturates the image, so you can really see the dust. You don't want to touch this, but you can click on this levels adjustment, and you can you know, tweak this level to really see any dust spots on here, okay? So you can play with these levels adjustments to really amplify that dust, and then you can just hover around. And the only dust spot I found was that dust spot right here. Now you'll notice we have a hill clone layer right here. Now, whenever you click on here, you will have to go back and click on this hill clone layer. It's set on that layer by default, but if you make an adjustment on Amplify Dust, you will have to go back and click on here and make it active. Now, the TK8 panel sets you up with a spot healing tool. And now, with my brush, I'm just going to paint over this area right in here like so and see if we can heal that. Yes, and we've healed that dust spot right up. Okay, and now all you need to do is click clean dust again it'll get rid of those other layers and it just leaves you with the hill clone layer the dust spot was right around in here so let's take a look here's before see the dust spot right there and now here is after the dust spot is gone and now two quick steps and we'll be done i feel my midtones could just lighten up a little bit not much so and i do this a lot during edits i feel the midtones sometimes darken up a little bit and i need to lighten them up so i'll go back and click on the luminosity mask button I'll click on Midtones 1, and then I'll click on the Curves Adjustment for the output, and I'll change the Blend Mode to Screen to lighten up the Midtones, and I'll take the Opacity off, and I'll just start to build it up slowly and just to lighten up my Midtones, and I think, and I'll stop where I like it. On my notes I have, I went to like 66, I think, but in this case, I'm going to go to like 50. Here's my before and here's my after, and I think that looks good. There's a couple towers back here. You see right here and right here, and I don't know what this is here, 
but I don't really like it. I want to remove those. And I do have this hill clone layer, so I'm going to make it active. That's the layer I removed the dust spot with. I'm going to use that new remove tool, and it's right here in my tool well. So I'm going to click on that. And right now I have remove after each stroke. I'm going to uncheck this. And also I have checked on sample all layers. That's important because I can use this pixel layer for that. And all I need to do is paint over these towers like this. And this thing right here, I'm just going to paint over it like that. And then I'll click on this check and it'll send this up to the cloud and Adobe will analyze it and all that stuff is removed. So that is it. Now we started out the image look like this. And now it looks like this. And I like it. Now we can tell it's a thunderstorm and rain is happening back in here. And we have this beautiful field of poppies. And I do like the depth of field. It's a very shallow depth of field. I think it was around like an F7 somewhere around in there. And it was probably on a tripod, I'm thinking, but I can't say for sure. But I do like it. It's kind of an artistic feel to this image, and I like it. Good job, Jose, on this image. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this full edit from Lightroom into Photoshop and the TK8 plugin for Photoshop. Thank you again, Jose, for letting us use your image today. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me again today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.